Hey guys, what's going on? This is Chris from Weebly Tricks, and today I'm going to show you how to make a one-page smooth scrolling navigation in your Weebly site. This video tutorial will follow the written step-by-step -step tutorial that could be found on Weebly Tricks, and I will post a link to that written step-by-step -step tutorial in the description of this video. Now just to give you a quick demo of the feature we're going to be implementing with this tutorial, here is our modified Weebly theme iron. And in the navigation here, there are five items. You can ignore the last one. Um, and when you click on each of these items, you'll be smoothly scrolled to a specific section on this single page. Okay, so that is the feature we're going to implement today with this tutorial. Okay, on a side note, um, you will need to have a fixed navigation in your Weebly theme for this feature to work best. But don't worry if you do not, uh, because I will explain at the end of this tutorial how to make your navigation fixed. Um, and lastly, I just want to note that with the implementation of this feature, uh, this tutorial will create a new page layout for your Weebly site. Uh, but don't um, that will also include uh, four different sections created by code. But don't worry, uh, despite this, you will still be able to create your own sections with Weebly's sections element. Um, you can drop the sections element into the middle of this page. Okay. All right. So this is the demo site we'll be using. And this is Wheelie's free theme, Unite. All right. So let's get started. Step one, open Wheelie's HTML CSS editor top click on theme and on the bottom left click on edit html forward slash css that will give us access to release html html css editor step two create a new page layout okay so we're going to go back to the Weebly editor here and since we want uh, the page that we're going to create to use uh, to have a header we're just going to click on the header.html page layout under header type Select all the coding within it, click copy. Under header type, click the plus icon, select new header type. Call this new header type scroll. Okay. And uh, select all of the coding within the new page layout, delete it. Right click, and then paste the HTML coding that you copied from the header.html page layout. Okay. Step three, add jQuery coding. Okay, so copy the jQuery coding that's provided in step three. And scroll down on the right in your new page layout. And directly before the body tag here, I'm give yourself some space. You're going to paste this jQuery coding. Paste that in there. Okay. Tell you. And for you, um, you will see within the jQuery coding on the written tutorial, there's a there's an orange URL. You need to add, copy that URL. Actually, add. You'll need to add your site's URL in place of the orange URL that you see in the jQuery coding. Um, and for us, we already have it implemented here. So you would just actually paste that right in here. Make sure that when you do, that there is a forward slash hashtag E at the end of it. Step four, copy and add HTML coding. All right, so this part can be a little tricky. So. So while still in your new page layout, scroll up and you're going to look for the main content area coding. And the main content area coding uh, houses the white sections mustache code. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that code and we're going to paste it twice directly above the code we just copied. So one, two, oops, and twice below it. So twice below the code. Okay. 
right? And now we need to delete the uh, the white sections mustache code as well as the white content code from the codes that we just pasted in. Okay, so we paste it for one, two, three, four. I'm going to delete uh, the sections. white content code this is our so we want to keep this one it's the one that will allow us to use these sections element And we're going to copy the code that's provided, the orange code that's copied, sorry, the orange code that's provided in the written tutorial. Copy that. We're going to paste that into each of the four uh, codes that we had pasted, that we copied and pasted. Okay. So we're going to write in between the container dev. So I'm going to move this over. I'm gonna make this look nice, so I'm just gonna give myself some space here, real quick. So now within each of these four, one, two, three, four, we're going to paste the HTML coding that we copied from the written tutorial directly into the container div. Two, three, four. We're going to do this four times and make sure this looks nice. Uh, one, two, three and four okay yeah. all right step five adjust the html coding all right so what we need to do is okay so within um, each of the four codes that we copied and pasted you'll see in the first you'll actually see that each one has a name of A, and you'll see the number one appears twice. So this this happens four times. So it's here, here, and here. So what we need to do is we need to give each of these uh, these uh, codes the HTML these each of these HTML codes their own identity. So the first one we're going to leave alone. We're going to leave the, the, the name of the first one as A, and we're going to leave the two ones in here. For the second one, we're going to change the name to B. We're going to change the two ones to uh, number two. Move down to the third one. We're going to name, give this name C. I'm going to need, uh, replace the ones with three. I think you can see the pattern that's going on here. And the fourth one, as you can imagine, will be D. Give the name D and then change the one to four. Okay. Step six, add CSS coding. Copy the CSS coding that's provided in the written tutorial. Back to the movie editor. Click on your CSS file under styles. It should be main.less. And paste the CSS coding right into the CSS file. Look nice. And from there, we're going to click save. Okay. Step seven, select scroll page layout. So what you do is go to pages at the top, 
click on your home page and you can see that actually scroll was already automatically set once I click save okay step 8 add section titles alright and on the fun can begin so as you can see on your page layout there are four click here to edit text okay these are your four different sections and I'll show you if you go to builds and you take an element you'll see they have one two and there's your sections element three four so these one two oops and uh, three four are the four sections that we created with the HTML coding now I'm going to give the title to these different sections so the first one we're going to call it services and we'll call locations third one we'll call about and the fourth one we'll call contact okay now we need to okay so step nine now we need to link to these sections okay now to do that it's very simple all you gotta go is back to the weekly editor go to pages at the top and you're gonna create four external uh, four external pages okay and each of these external pages is going to link to one of the four sections that you created with the HTML coding so we'll create our first one we're gonna name this one services because the name of our first section is services and then we need to grab the URL this of the site and for this site this is the URL and within the external link section, we're going to paste the URL of this site. And we're going to, at the end of it, we're going to have hashtag A. Okay. One. Repeat this process three more times. Our second section is going to be locations. It's our site's URL. End it with a hashtag B. Okay. Third one is going to be about, right? Yep, about. It's in our site URL, end it with a hashtag C. All right, and you can see the pattern that's unfolding here. And the last one is contact. Right. Okay, doesn't matter. You can name these pages whatever you want. They don't have to, um, the page name doesn't have to reflect the, the title of the section. But in the perfect world, I, I imagine it would. Okay, <laughs> just to make this easier. And the last one, so we'll put in our site URL and do with hashtag D. Done. Okay. Step 10, link to the top. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to create um, a fifth external page, and this is going to be the home, uh, the home item and the parent. And the navigation that will, when it's clicked, uh, the site, the page will scroll to the top. So create an external page. And we're going to call this one home as well. And in the external link, we're going to put in our site URL, just like we did before. For the summer, we're just going to end with a hashtag E. So we're still following the alphabet here. Click done. We're going to drag and drop this to the top here. So it appears in the navigation. And then we're going to, since this is a one page theme we're creating here, we're going to hide the uh, the standard home page because the, our visitors to the site will only be um, using the home page here but there will be we can we, we will have links within the body here to link to other pages but as far as navigation goes uh, we kind of want to keep people on the home page here okay step 11 drag and drop elements all right, so now you can build your sections here. So just, so, hello, this is the first section, All right? And, you know, you can, images, whatever you want to do. This is our section. And we're going to put a contact form in the contact section. Okay, so there are your four sections that you created from this tutorial. And you have to remember that the sections element still works here as well. So you can just drag it out the sections element here. And you can go ahead and create your own 
section as well in combination with the section elements. I'm sorry, in combination with the sections that we created from the tutorial. Okay. And we're just going to give this a background color. Uh, never heard of transparent. Oh, wait. Transparent. Never heard of that color. But, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to call it. We're just going to make this like a gray. All right. So here we go. All right, guys, so let's publish the site and see if this is working. Okay, so I'm going to click on locations. Look at that. Scrolls to location. But where's our navigation? That doesn't make it easy for us to scroll between different sections if the navigation is at the top. It's kind of silly. So what do we need to do? Okay, well, actually, um, if your Weebly theme comes with a fixed navigation, you're done with this tutorial. Um, hang around. If you do not have a fixed navigation, I will show you uh, very quickly how to how to make your the navigation in your Weebly site fixed. All right. So let's do that real quick. So head back to the tutorial. Okay, here we go. So the first thing we need to do is identify the class or div of our navigation. Okay, so I'm going to right click. This is white box here at the top. This is one div. I need to identify the class or the ID that it is. And it's right here, okay? And it's a class, it's called, dot, uh, it's unite header. So I need to find this code, the CSS class code, in the CSS file in the back here. And we've got a theme at the top, edit HTML forward slash CSS. And I know that this uh, CSS class code is under styles. And for this particular theme, it's in a CSS file called underscore nap less. And it's right here at the top, dot unite header. And its position, I'm going to set to fixed. So fixed means that the navigation is going to stay at the top regardless um, of the page being scrolled. Okay. Click save. Publish. And you'll see that the navigation, whoops. Okay, so you'll see that the navigation is stuck at the top, but part of our banner image has become cut off. Okay, so what that means is when you make an element a div fixed, as this is right here, um, it removes the div from the page. So it kind of like brings it forward towards you, if you can imagine it in that way. And every other uh, div within the site will automatically move up because space, there's been a void created where the navigation div used to be. So all we need to do is just right click on the div that would was below the uh, the navigation div, which in this case, so here's the one that here's the div that we made fixed, the dot uh, the unite header class, and the one below it is the banner wrap. So all we need to do is add just a top margin to it. So right here I'm going to type in margin top. I'm going to type in one px from the start. Put my mouse over the header div so I can see how much I need to increase the space here. Actually, I'm going to put it over the banner. Okay, so I'm going to increase, as you can see on the right here, the margin top is increasing, right? So if you look over here, I'm increasing it. You see the orange uh, space at the top is being created. That is the margin. And I want that space to be big enough so that the entire banner div is visible. All right, so for this, um, we need to set so that the banner uh, div is not obstructed by the fixed navigation. We need to give the banner wrap div a top margin of 120 px so i'm going to copy that this is the class of the banner div back to the css file theme at the top edit html forward slash css in the bottom and here's the banner coding that i had before a banner wrap margin top 120 px Save, publish, and his face should not be obstructed by the navigation in any way. And it is not. Look at that. All right, so let's try our smooth scrolling. Services, about, services, contact, locations, home. Beautiful, works just fine. All right, but lastly, check this out. Okay. Um, so uh, this margin top works for the desktop view, but once the site 
share here. This number right here should be a width image. So once this number reaches tablet width, tablet screen size, which is 992 pixels wide, the navigation div actually reduces in height. What this means is that we have this large gap of space here. So what we need to do is we need to uh, set a, a unique margin, a top margin, just for the tablet view. Um, okay, so 120 pixel margin top for the desktop that we just created isn't going to work. So I'm going to click on that 120, highlight my mouse over, hover my mouse over the banner up div. I'm going to reduce the height, sorry, the margin, the top margin. Actually, I should probably do it. I'm going to hover my mouse over the navigation div. And I'm going to, at the same time, I'm going to reduce the height here on the right of the banner wrap, uh, the margin top, the top margin of the banner wrap. Reduce that until it's flush with the navigation div. Okay, so for the tablet view, we need to set the, the top margin for the banner wrap to 50px. So to do that, back into the tutorial, I'm going to copy this code here in the bottom. That starts with app media screen. Okay, so back to the weekly editor. Theme at the top, edit HTML for slash CSS on the bottom. And right underneath our banner code, we added before, paste in the CSS code that we copied. And it'll make that look nice. Okay, so that should what that means is is that once the width of my site reaches 992 pixels wide, um, the banner wrap class will change from 120 pixels, right? So the top margin will change from 120 pixels to just a top margin of 50 pixels. Okay, so I'm gonna click save, publish. Okay, refresh that. As you can see, so this is our desktop view. Smooth scrolling is working just fine. Now I'm going to reduce the size of the screen to mimic the width of a tablet. And as you can see, the margin has adjusted as, as well, the top margin. So originally the top margin for the banner app was 120 pixels for the desktop. When we reduce the width to 992 pixels, i.e. tablet view, the the, uh, you can see here on the right that the um, the new uh, top margin has kicked in. All right, guys, and uh, actually you would, you would repeat this process for the um, the mobile view as well, which is 700, 767 pixels wide. But because um, the navigation div of this specific theme remains, the height of this navigation div remains the same. Um, there's no need to add a, a, uh, a CSS coding for the for the mobile version as well. All right, guys, and that is it. So that is how you make a one-page smooth scrolling navigation in your Weebly site.